Marico believes that when you hire people, you should hire them for their will and not their skill. As a consequence, we recruit people and whatever knowledge they need, whatever skill they need, we believe in on the job. So there are a lot of people who will uh, come on board in a certain function, but would be moving on across functions. So we have a classical examples where someone in finance has moved on to become a business head or someone who has worked in supply chain has got into marketing or someone who has joined as a supply chain person has moved to mean sales. So we've got varieties of ways in which we enrich. Again, if you look at a typical Mariconian, no Mariconian will do a role beyond two to three years. So there is constant change in each one's role. So that's the dimension of enriching. And the entire idea there again is we do not want people who follow orders or people who just wait to be told. We want people who are self-starters. So when we look at talent again, we look at talent who are hungry for growth, self-motivated and are all, uh, all constantly looking at challenge and can challenge existing paradigms. So more much, very much in the, I think jargonistic word for that is a term called entrepreneur rather than an entrepreneur and person who's within the organization, but works like an entrepreneur. Fulfilling are, uh, we have one of the most uh, unique uh, performance management system where we keep a difference between performance and potential. So to give an example, if someone is a damn good sales officer and doing very good in terms of sales does not mean he's a very good sales manager, which is a team leader role. So for us, if you want to be a leader, that's about potential. And if you want to give deliverables, that's about performance. So very well balanced, doing well, it has been tested over the last 20 years and it's doing really well. So that's how we look at fulfilling. And fulfilling is also as a way in which we align the organizational need and the person's strengths and aspiration to create meaningful roles. So that's how fulfilling is taken care of. So that's largely a talent value proposition, which is aimed at all the people we have on board and those whom we would want to bring on board. Now I'm going to move on to hiring. Uh, before I move on to the focus topic of internship, I just wanted to touch upon uh, what we do on the hiring front. So if you look at it hiring and uh, especially uh, let me uh, uh, just give you a context before I get into the hiring piece. So today Marico is a 4,000 crore plus organization. And uh, to tell you, we are at a certain scale, but when we started as an organization, and that would be way back in 91, and all of you would have heard Mr. Harsh Mariwala speak at the Ascent launch as to how we build the organization. The core tenets of talent were sown during those times itself. So these what you are seeing today of the organization in terms of a great culture, uh, good people, good quality talent is more because of the seeds that were sown right at the time of inception. So on hiring, our philosophies have been uh, that we should recruit people who add value. Okay, so we look at hiring at two levels. One is the lateral recruits, basically vacant positions which need to be recruited immediately and uh, skills which you know you need immediately just because you've got into a new category or a new channel and uh, you can't wait to build that skill. So that's where we go in for lateral recruits. And the second piece is the campus program, which is where you bring talent fresh out of campuses and then you groom them to become managers and leaders in the organization. So we look at uh, two verticals of hiring, lateral and um, campus. Just to give you a process, because uh, many a time this question comes is, how does hiring really happen? And as an entrepreneur, when I want to do hiring, what is it that I need to watch out for? And uh, in fact, both the trust groups which I initiated, uh, I was the initiator. I realized that many a time um, entrepreneurs, the challenge is, do I put a process or should I go with a subjective judgment on people? And more so as you scale up, our realization has been that a process is what really makes a difference. And as soon as you can put in a process in terms of this stage and scale of your business, it helps. So we follow a very simple process. Any vacancy that we have, uh, we look at internal options first because we believe that any vacancy is an opportunity one to restructure to give opportunities for people who can grow up to the next level. Then we go in for an internal job posting. Again, that's in a way which goes back to a talent proposition of job rotation. So people can apply and do job rotations. Then we source for sourcing. We also have an internal program where members, uh, our own employees can refer talent. And if all these two things don't happen, either internal or referral, then we go to recruitment agencies. Uh, what we have also done is we have created certain 
very good formats of the company application forms, which helps us to eliminate the talent we don't want. It's, so it's not a selection tool, but an elimination tool. So a detailed Q&A based employment form, which actually uh, tells us more about the person rather than only the demographics. And then we also rely on uh, psychometric tools, depending on the level of the person. Uh, for an interview, no person uh, goes through more than four interviews. We try to limit the number of interviews so that decision making is uh, uh, faster and uh, a candidate is not kept waiting for long. And in terms of selection, once a, a candidate is done with in terms of interview, we do a thorough reference check. You do an offer and we also do a validation check, which has, uh, we found has been very useful in the last couple of years. So that's about a background check. And when a person gets selected, the person goes on to joining. So this is a kind of hiring process we follow at Marico. Uh, both our uh, internal referral scheme and our uh, job uh, portal, internal job posting are branded. One is called Mintos and another is called Tarif. What you see in the bracket says uh, CBI is uh, nothing other than competent CBS interview, unless that acronym has started giving you some ideas. Um, <laughs> So that's our process. So in case anyone has any question on this, you can uh, pass it on to Manak and uh, probably towards the end when I come in, I can take questions on this uh, process aspect. Uh, moving forward, uh, I'm moving on to the main topic today we have, which is the campus uh, piece in terms of how can a, an entrepreneur leverage students who are uh, getting coached and trained in theory for certain short term projects. So just to give you an overview, uh, we have a program which is a campus program which is a very robust program. Uh, uh, we cover management trainee roles across uh, all our managerial requirements, be it uh, in the area of sales, marketing, operation, HR, finance. We also include chartered accountants. We also in fact take lawyers. Uh, what I have not put up here is we also have a management trainee program for uh, PhDs, which is basically doctorates in the science field uh, required largely by R&D function. Executive levels, we go to engineering colleges and certain non-premier management institutes for our executive requirements. Uh, our numbers per year is around uh, 20 to 25 management trainees. Uh, we do a 30 uh, people summer intern program, which sometimes even goes to 35 and we go up to 12 executive trainees every year. So to give you a proper perspective, our manager talent in Marico is around uh, 200 plus. So what you are seeing when I say to 20 to 25 management trainees, that means uh, almost 10% of a manager uh, talent comes through our uh, management trainee program and our annual attrition at a manager uh, level is around uh, 13%. So you can imagine that uh, if 10% is coming through the management trainee route, the balance 3% is only coming through lateral. So the entire thought here is you build talent, which works as a pipeline to feed into the vacant positions that come in. So it's a well-defined and well-covered program. Um, I'll uh, just to, I think I'll just uh, spend two, three minutes here because uh, many a time this question comes to entrepreneurs, when do we create this program? So let me tell you that uh, when Marico started in 91, it had a program since then. So in fact, we have got people who are currently at leadership levels who have actually come through the management training route. So this is a program which if you start early gives you an advantage because it helps you enculturize, enculturize uh, talent to the way your DNA of the organization is, your belief system, and it helps you leverage uh, young minds in a different uh, manner altogether which is in a way aligned to your business purpose. So it helps in the long run. Uh, if someone is looking at a short term uh, benefit, you may not see it. But if you one looks at a three year or a five year horizon, a campus program really helps a lot in terms of uh, uh, building talent within. Uh, we have also done uh, uh, analysis in terms of that uh, statement that I've made that uh, empty program or a campus program is really useful. Uh, when we look at the potential ratings of our talent, so be it lateral hire plus those whom we've taken from the management trainee route or the campus route like we call it, we have always found that the people who come through this program are much more superior in terms of potential and performance. So there is clearly a, a evidence on the table in terms of their caliber, the kind of roles that they can do. Uh, the entire advantage is that they start young, they understand the culture, they understand the way the organization thinks, they understand what are the challenges one looks at at talent and they are able to uh, quickly adapt and grow in the organization. So 
in a way, if is there a business case for Marico in terms of the campus program? It is, and it serves a business purpose. So it is not only left to a training where people come and go, but we really see a business case in terms of talent comes on board, on board, grows, and gets into leadership positions. Uh, I'll now move on to uh, the main topic that we have, and uh, I think over the next three four slides, I will uh, try and cover uh, the focus topic, which was in terms of how can entrepreneurs leverage the short-term internship programs which uh, various institutes offer. See, why do we have a summer program or an autumn program, which is uh, typically an uh, eight-week program? Our, and this is more to do with our belief. Uh, our belief here is that these programs or these internships uh, actually are mutually beneficial. How? One. Uh, as a part of the organizational process every year, uh, say around uh, Jan Feb, the organization comes up with certain strategic initiatives and certain initiatives it wants to validate before it wants to scale up and for which you need resources. Now the organization has uh, two choices. One choice is to give it to existing resources, okay, and uh, which may many a times is not possible because they are already into full time roles or second is to look at temporary resources who come in and there is no direct commitment in terms of uh, permanency or any other role so they come in so which are those resources you can look at so you can go to the go to the job market and hire a person on a 3 month or a 6 month contract and do that uh, and wherein this person would be experienced in experience a variety of other things what we found is that rather than looking at that if you go for the mba students there's a huge advantage there because these are the people who can come on board so they come in for a short uh, term uh, and they are able to cater to this need which is a very temporary need and how it helps the organization also is normally you would tend to recruit a management trainee at the campus by taking an interview and uh, knowing the kind of rush that happens at campus at around 45 minutes to max I think 45 minutes also is something which is great but in 30 to 45 minutes you need to take a decision a person but when you have someone who's worked with you for two months it actually gives you a two month window to do your interview it really tells you how the person is not only in terms of his conversation methods or the way the person presented himself or herself but really tells you given a challenge what does this person really do what are this person's abilities what is this person's knowledge and it also gives you a glimpse of what this person's potential can be so this is how it works for the organization it also helps the organization deal with its temporary projects that we talked about now if you look at students students you have uh, some students in uh, the management institutes who come with experience and some who don't come with experience but this these students are very well rounded in terms of theory so they are they are net on the theory now the challenge for them is having known the theory how do i put it in practice having known this theory i have made some assumptions i have made some beliefs is it really so can i put them in practice and check whether these assumptions and things work so that's an opportunity for them it also gives them a managerial experience because most of the students either come through engineering or through commerce or other backgrounds and uh, what they have seen in a, a classroom may not be the reality on ground so they it gives them an experience rather than only relying on theories by working with people and the main part which is normally missing in management institute is the interpersonal piece so the eight week program also gives them an idea in terms of what it is to work in a organization what how a work environment is what are the challenges one faces so that experience they get and the most important one which is the ultimate is it also opens up job opportunities for them so that's how it helps the student so in a way if one looks at it it's a complete win-win and what we felt is if this is so then how can you make it relevant for them in the longer run to share with you what is the process we follow in terms of uh, hiring uh, for the summer internship program uh, in the earlier slide I had shared that uh, we go to around uh, 15 campuses and uh, our numbers are around 30 so on an average if you just do simple maths it would be around 2 per campus so we before we go and select the students actually we go and select the campuses so we have an objective criteria in which we will choose which campus we will go to and which campus we may not go to so to share with you in terms of what it is so for example if you go to uh, India's best campus and knowing our positioning we may not get to see the top talent so and if you're not going to get to see the top talent and if you end up recruiting talent which is at a lower percentile then still you have not met your purpose versus if you go to a middle level campus or a next level campus and you are able to see the top 10 percentile talent 
then it is worth going to those institutes rather than only banking on the top end campuses. So our belief is more in terms of the quality of talent that we get to see that we choose our campus. And in no way do we lower our bar. So whatever is our metric for camp uh, a talent selection is independent of the campus. So it's not just because we went to a premier high end premier campus, we'll choose whoever we get. And if we go to a lower end campus, we'll be very choosy. No, we have a well defined internal metric and we follow that. So that's how we choose campuses. It, the process is simple. We put uh, when we go, obviously in the uh, colleges, it's much more structured nowadays. You tell about the company and they apply. Students apply. You tell them about uh, your company. Nowadays, uh, campuses actually invite you over to make a presentation. You make a presentation about your organization, the challenges that you have, and if if one can actually share the projects as to this is for what I am looking at a person, then the responses are much more overwhelming. You get that, and then you have your own selection process. We believe in a, a three-step process. We have a, a group discussion followed with the business case, and then a personal interview. So, uh, at campus, Marico is known to have a longer uh, interview and a selection process, but that's fine with us because ultimately we get what we want in terms of the talent we are looking for. So that's what happens when it comes to getting people on board. Uh, what the other dimension uh, which really makes a difference is the quality of projects. So when we choose our projects, these projects go through a huge scrutiny in the sense they go right up to the top team. So any project that has been given has to have a business connect to it, it has to have a business objective. We do not give esoteric theoretical projects. The project that comes in has to be a live project. So when we say live, that any recommendation that comes out of the project will be implemented. If the recommendations, there is a tentative, tentativeness in terms of this not happening, then such a project is shared. So what happens every year is if we are going to have 30 summer interns coming on board, actually we will be generating around 40, 45 projects. And from that, we will choose the top 30 projects. Now there, because of this rigor, when a student comes on board, he or she understand that this is not something where a person can go on the internet, do some cross-checking with some other batchmates and create a report. It's not about report writing. It is about live actual experience with a given opportunity or a problem which the person is supposed to solve the problem or encash the challenge. So that's that's how we um, uh, look at the live projects. And uh, just to give you a, an idea there, if last year if I look at it, we had summer interns. Some of the projects are actually going going on. We have had projects where somebody would have come with an uh, idea which would have saved the company a crore or something somewhere somebody would have come with an idea which has given us an uh, increase in uh, uh, what do you call in terms of coverage which have impacts the uh, growth of uh, how do you put it in terms of the channel growth. We have had projects where people have come with ideas to increase productivity. We have had projects where a person has come and changed the way we look at analytics of analyzing data and other aspects. So these are projects which are very relevant and impactful. These are the two dimensions which happen before a person comes on board. So once a intern has come on board, then first thing is if you look at really look at eight weeks, so it is around 40 to 50 days we are talking out. Having said that, we spend two days of that, which is almost uh, uh, a, a good chunk, two out of 50 is almost 10% uh, of it we spend on uh, induction. And there's a two day interaction right from uh, the top team uh, and the MD, uh, which happens. So they get a clear idea in terms of what is the seriousness of this uh, project. And it is not an uh, PR exercise of only getting some uh, management uh, students on board, but it is much more serious. And the way they will get treated is not as interns, but much more as equal managers. So the expectation is as equal to that. And uh, they are told in terms of the entire knowledge about the organizations, the functions, their expectations. Uh, this is what happens. Uh, once a person comes on board, there is a detailed uh, project sheet in terms of the uh, project brief that is given, which has the midterm review and the annual uh, midterm review and the project review, annual uh, final review uh, planned, uh, which gets followed thoroughly. And what we also do as a gift and this is something we introduced almost eight years back. As a gift to the summer intern, we also do career counseling. Because one of the strong beliefs which is operating at the campuses or practice, let me call it not a brief, is that you tend to choose career based on what your peer set is doing. So we understood this insight and said that if we can build an awareness in the students about what 
their strengths are what their interests are and their aspirations are then it will help them choose their roles much better so that has helped us a lot we have come across situations where we have been able to create shifts in people as someone who wanted to do an mba realized that he's actually wanting to do something else or someone who felt that he wanted to do sales realized that he doesn't actually enjoy sales but would want to go to finance and vice versa so those kind of career counseling also we do for the students so this is at a broad level uh, our entire uh, summer internship process uh, one dimension which uh, i have not mentioned is the selection along with the selection of projects we also do selection of the guides so for each project there is a guide so in fact we pay a very close attention to the guide that in terms of is the guide someone who can really uh, mentor can he really develop the summer intern our uh, message to the summer interns is that you don't have a boss you are your own boss so you are your boss of your project the guide you have is actually a guide so it is more in terms of a bouncing board to just to help you as a mentor that's it but there also we uh, apply certain uh, uh, process in terms of who can be a guide and who cannot be a guide so that also is an important uh, element in the internship program i'll now move on to the final part of my uh, presentation uh, is in terms of what our experience has uh, um, taught us about this entire thing see first of all like i said earlier key words live relevant and meaningful they are in a way have to be built into your program so when we look at a project if the profile does not fit the project it is better not to do not to give such a person a project because if you do that it's a lose lose so anything that you give it has to be live it has to be relevant to the person and it has to make sense in terms of fulfilling for the person and more time has to be spent on the why why has this been a project what is the reason of this project what is its relevance and if this project goes through what will be the business impact now having told this to an uh, intern is when you actually really get the benefit without that the person actually in 8 weeks if the person just spends 2 to 3 uh, weeks figuring out the why of the project the person cannot focus on the what and the how so we try to min uh, minimize the questions on the why so even before a person comes in for the project we try and uh, pre circulate the project brief give him uh, or her an idea in terms of why this project is important why it has been given to him or her the other part is clarifying expectation and project deliverables any project where the deliverables are not clear is surely a complete waste waste of the guide's time waste of the student's time and waste of organizational time and money so like i said in the beginning each project deliverable gets vetted even right up to the top team each functional head vets it the top team vets it and then it is given out and to ensure that it is going into the direction that we want it we do a status check every fortnight so every two weeks there is a check in terms of is it moving in terms of the direction we wanted now the intent here is not to micromanage but to in a way reassure the intern that yes your project is important we are here to help you it has been designed for your success and if you are not seeing success this is the areas we may want to relook at it it may mean the intern may be given a strong feedback in terms of what he or she needs to do or it may mean in terms of also checking the project deliverables or any changes one needs to do uh um, the other thing which is a bigger challenge is this entire piece on encouraging the students to challenge existing paradigm so if the te tendency of the system is we have been here for 5 years or 10 years and this is the way to do it there's no point getting students on board because the students by nature will be inquisitive by nature would want to challenge things and if you allow them to question and question is when their minds open and they come up with brilliant ideas and in fact brilliant ideas and insights but this comes at a cost of your patience so if you have someone who's uh, been there long rigid feels he or she knows everything and a summer intern can't add value then it's like you engage a summer intern for 8 weeks and at the end of it the guide himself or herself dictates the project deliverables and the uh, the project recommendation so such a person goes back demotivated uh, and then is a bad a bad ambassador for the organization at the campus whereas if a guide understand that this project has to be delivered only through the summer intern and just is there as a sounding board and a guiding board then such projects do really very well so that's what we have on the process uh, let me also tell you that uh, on the summer program the way we have designed it every year we take around 20 to 25 management uh, interns so the management trainees as we call them which get into permanent roles of managers after one year now in marico 
almost 60 to 70 percent of that number. So if I'm going to take 20 percent, last uh, sorry, if I'm going to take 20 numbers, last year when I this year I'm going to take 20. So from this 20, almost my 20 requirement, we have done it through summer interns and we have taken around 15 people. So then I don't need to spend too much time for my final recruitments. Based is my experience with uh, the summer interns. We have a, a PPO, a pre-placement offer, uh, which they go again through a rigorous selection process. They get selected and they move in as MTs. As a consequence, because you have already spent two months in the organization, these people get operationalized very fast. Uh, and are able to get into roles very fast and do very well. So even if I look at my top talent in the organization and I look at 100 people just to give a number, I can see 60 people out of that coming through this route and really doing very well. Uh, to also make it much more uh, encouraging and competitive in a healthy way, we also have a summer project contest where a winner can, uh, at an organizational uh, level, the top winner can get a cash prize of 1 lakh and a winner at a functional level can get an iPad. So which goes very well uh, with the students and there is a lot of uh, competition to see that your project is best, the business impact is highest uh, in terms of making a difference. So that's what we have on our, uh, uh, our process and our program and what I wanted to share with you in terms of our learnings. So now uh, I'm through with my presentation and uh, we can take questions now. Yeah, so thanks uh, Ashudur, I think that was really insightful. Um, one quick, uh, one quick question that I have is, um, in terms of, in terms of your message to the audience and, uh, SN members, what would you rate from, from their perspective? This was, this was brilliant from Mariko's point of view. What would you mm -hmm. rate uh, the two or three top considerations that they should have, uh, while preparing, not engagement will come later as they think through or as they prepare to engage students? See, the foremost thing to do is what is my value proposition for the student? Why would a student want to come and work with me? So in terms of the value proposition for the students, for a temporary or even a permanent assignment. And the second thing is once I have decided my value proposition, what steps will I take or what steps I will take and ensure that I lift the value proposition? Because when it comes to articulating a value proposition, we tend to make it aspirational. But when it comes to practicing, if we are not able to live up to it, then the promise you make to the student doesn't happen. And then the student goes back and, you know, it creates much more a bad, uh, what do you say, image for the organization. At the same time, because the person is not motivated when uh, what you promised and when the person comes on board and sees, the project deliverable doesn't happen. So right. the value proposition, and how will I make, make it come alive? Right. Um, there was one. There was one uh, question I think Radha had uh, for you, which is about link to stipends. Uh, you know, what would your um, view be on stipends? Uh, if you look at, uh, see, uh, we operate in the FMCG space. We compete with uh, talent with PNG. Lee and the banks so our stipends are may not be to that league but are not bad either so we would be paying a summer intern a stipend of around 50,000 per month I see yeah and that you're saying so in a way you're implying that the stipend would also uh, be different from industry to industry domain to domain yeah it will be industry to industry domain to domain and even to an extent uh, the stratas of institutes you go to uh, it also, for example, we we have also have certain times when we get special request wherein people are open to work without stipend as well. Right. So how does one so how does people, one calibrate? Yeah. yeah. How does one calibrate that? See, one needs to calibrate basis where are you competing for talent. So if you are going to a campus and you want to take people of that league. So, for example, if you want to go to the premier campuses and you really want good talent, then you will have to be paying a stipend in light line with what the others are paying. Right. So that's where you have to be because at the end of it, if you cannot afford to pay one lakh for eight weeks, then it's a different matter altogether of going to a campus and searching for talent because the talent is not going to come to you. Correct. Correct. 
um what friends versus there are yes var i'll just do, please, i don't please, do it versus please. there there have been experiences of ours for example exam bhubaneswar when we started out was a campus where no one went to okay okay so our unique proposition to them was we will come to your campus they promised us you will be the day one first employer we actually invested with in them through programs and other things and over time the rapport we have built with that campus is huge but over time exam bhubaneswar also has reached a level where it is, is now very close to the premier campuses sure so what you can also do is if so for example again this is my experience of ascent i am saying is as a entrepreneur i know i may not be able to go to the iims for example but there are other campuses where let's say for a sake i want to take a talent which is if we put all the talent of all the management campuses together and say i want to take talent which is 90th percentile and above quality of talent right okay and if i go to iim ahmedabad i may find it 95% of that talent of iim ahmedabad mm -hmm. is above 90th percentile right at quality of talent but if i go to a, say a xyz campus only 2% is above 90th percentile of right. quality of talent and right. i am able to get those two people that's right. great whereas if i go to and i am uh, the best i am and i am not able to get those 95 students i am left with those five who are below 90 still mm. it doesn't make sense for me to go to such a premier campus right so that's one way one looks at depending on your stage of business and uh, your stage in terms of what you want interesting uh friends any other questions please type it in uh and if i don't see too many then we can quickly move on to radha and then continue getting the questions um there's one more question uh, you know for you uh, ashutosh is pre placement offer does marico have a have a process radha i think that's being asked by you do you think that's been addressed or that question still stands okay that has been answered sounds good so i think we don't have any more questions as of now uh, ashutosh thanks so much i you know will request you to stay engaged because the questions could come along the way um yeah sure and uh, this has been lovely and uh, thank you so much friends we know we can't applause in audio so one way to just to have some fun is please everybody raise your hands to applaud uh, uh, <laughs> ashutosh <laughs> lovely so you've got hands going up all the way thank you thank you so much uh, and uh, we'll now move on to uh, to radha and um, we'll take it from there uh thanks ashutosh give me a second please radha yes. you're set you'll have to give the screen to her yeah i'm doing that so friends this was the uh, enterprise view on uh, uh how do we engage students and now let's see the academic view uh which in itself is going to be interesting and i'm just giving this radha uh radha you've got the control now uh while radha is setting her up uh, friends i'm just uh, putting one more poll up so request you all to uh, you know respond to that as well Radha are you ready Radha can you do a sound check for us please Yeah yeah that's what i'm saying can you hear me now Yes Hello uh, yes okay. we can hear you So are great. the screen is on Is Sorry? the screen on The is screen, screen is on screen is got a poll on it but we will switch it we'll 
put it on right now okay. i think everybody just okay. polling on the earlier one sure uh friends mm -hmm. uh, if you all are done with polling i'm putting that off okay we are getting the poll in i'll get that up again later we'll now close this thanks okay so rather you're on uh please continue okay. thank you yeah uh, afternoon everyone uh, nice to be here in the afternoon uh, ashutosh has already uh, taken you through uh, something about uh, how mariko does uh, its uh, student internship and summer internship so uh, what i'm going to be doing is i have around uh, 10 odd slides where i'm going to be taking you through w what is it that an uh, that a uh, academic institute looks at okay so uh, the flow just give me a minute okay uh, yeah yeah okay so the presentation flow basically I've looked at around uh, six odd areas so you know I'm talking going to be talking about uh, objectives of internship the stakeholders something about internship types of internship uh, what happens on campus uh, from an academic point of view on the credits so are internships uh, evaluated and what is the outcome for the student the organization and the and the institute per se so uh, this is a broad flow so let me uh, go ahead now so when I'm talking about objectives of the internship, uh, typically uh, the internship uh, happens with uh, between the first year and the second year. So uh, the first year, the student, or maybe you know, if it's a if it's a short term course, which is maybe eleven months or fifteen months, it would be probably be the first three semesters, and then the student goes for an internship. Uh, so the student is looking at uh, you know his learned theories, his learned concepts in class and he wants to use that in a business situation, in an organizational situation. Now, uh, most students would, uh, would be either engineers or commerce or BMS, so that may be their background. And uh, these days, most students in managerial uh, colleges come with uh, some amount of experience. Um, my view is that the experience is largely with IT organizations. So they would have done something with technology, but uh, they may not have any exposure uh, to anything which is business related. Uh, so the way the student looks at an internship is that in the first year of, of college, of the institute, uh, he kind of, he or she kind of knows what is the, what is his or her intended specialization. So uh, typically the specializations work in the area of, uh, of marketing, operations, uh, HR, or, uh, or probably IT and systems. Uh, or we could have, uh, you know, there are programs which are to do with rural, ma rural marketing. So there are institutions for rural marketing. There are institutions which specialize in media. So when I'm talking about uh, the internship uh, uh, today I'm looking at a broad-based internship so I'm saying that, that most management institutes so management institutes could be uh, just pure management or it could be they could have a specialization in retail media um, rural space rural management and uh, international business so uh, the student tends to decide the specialization after the after the first year and what does what does the student expect? He expects a certification, certificate, and he expects a pre-placement offer. Those are the the certificate is a, is a smaller area. The pre-placement offer is what is what drives the student to. For you as an organization, uh, you know, Ashutosh has already mentioned some part of it is that you know uh, the the young uh, student brings creativity into the organization and he or she brings in a fresh pair of eyes uh, so so what happens is that probably you know because it's routine and it's a daily uh, daily job maybe you know we uh, we as employees don't overlook some parts so the student uh, you know has learned something just slightly different and he or she brings in that newness into the into the project 
uh, then uh, we are saying that the project, uh, you know, is is uh, needs to be something where, you know, which could be in an ideal stage. Uh, I am reiterating what uh, Ashutosh said. He said that you know they have a long range plan or or some strategy which they decide in Jan Feb, and then that's something which which they want validated. That's what he mentioned. So that's a similar thought that I have here. So the project may be just something which is which is being conceived, and and you know you have uh, a pair of hands to to do that, uh, or it could be you know they they find a solution to to a specific uh, challenge. So that's the way the uh, the objectives of the internship work. The for the uh, institute, the, the, I mean there could be an, uh, or there could be objectives for the institute too. The, so the objective for the institute is is that if we if the institute gets good organizations um, uh, to take their students for summer internship, then then automatically the the salaries of students go up the next year and and therefore you know uh, the placement becomes better and so on and so forth. So there are there are a lot of pluses for the institution when students get good internships. So, so that's a slide on you know objectives of internship. So I'll move ahead. Um, so I've said that uh, you know the the stakeholders in a in a summer internship program could be the organization that is you, your entrepreneurial organization, and and then the institution, which is which is the academic institution. So, um, so. Taking away from what's happened in the, in the previous part of the uh, of the presentation by Ashutosh, so I have said the HR uh, human resources uh, are are the people who would be responsible for the internship program, and uh, you know he I would call it a project guide here. So so he he did mention the same thing that there would be a guide from the organization, a similar thought. The, the reason behind the guide is that uh, very often uh, you know the student is fresh uh, he has no clue about what the organization is and, and uh, what happens is that uh, he's unsure on on what his expectations are so having a guide it's it's more like a mentor whom he can go and talk to and in you know in case in case he's stuck up with something you know he can be somebody whom he can be it's more like a sounding board than, than anything else and uh, then I've said that you could you could also have a supervisor, which is which is your project guide. It's important for the organization to have a detailed plan in place. I have put that down later on somewhere. So the supervisor has to also drive that. Um, students are uh, some stu I mean I will not say that about all students, but students are young. They need they, they need some amount of um, you know hand holding. I'm not saying hand holding hand holding per se. But uh, they would need some amount of guidance. So, so having a supervisor makes makes sense. Uh, from an institution perspective, what happens is that uh, you know uh, at the institutes, normally most institutions have a placement coordination team. So there would be uh, you know they would be called different things, but uh, largely it would be placement uh, something to do with campus placements, and uh, this. This placement coordination team in institutions is typically headed by somebody, so there would be an office which handles the placement coordination. So this is the group which actually liaises with with the organization uh, to get the summer intern summer internship process. These people are the ones uh, who also have the responsibility to handle the campus placements later on. Um, the other other the other two uh, stakeholders in this are the student uh, the student himself or herself and the faculty now most institutions would have a faculty guide for the student uh, the idea is to ensure that there is rigor in the in the summer internship project uh, we don't want the student to hook off we want the student to to have a, have a good project and and you know Use that learning when he comes back, when he or she comes back in the next year, and uh, and maybe contributes to the class from, you know, from a from a more um, experienced uh, method. So so there is a faculty now. Different institutions have different ways that they have the faculty tie up. So some institutions would have a faculty actually going to the organization. 
and uh, you know and and having a meeting this, the otherwise you'd have other institutions where they'll just just mail you or you know do do a quick call and try and see you know uh, uh, to check whether the student is working well are you happy etc so this could be a pre 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 internship or it could be somewhere in it could be a mid mid uh, review also i'll move on to my next slide um Ashutosh spoke about uh, two internships, so uh, summer and autumn. I've added a third one, which is to do with along with attending regular classes. Now, uh, most organized, most institutions would the summer and the autumn are the fixed ones, which are institute driven. Whereas uh, students also like to work with uh, concurrent projects or uh, you know consultancy projects, etc. They call it so. Every institution would would call it by different names. So that would also happen. So let me just uh, you know uh, uh, focus on the summer. This is typically uh, two months, nine weeks. Uh, uh, you know that's the way it is, eight or nine weeks. But then there are some institutions you would have, you could probably have a one year MBA, which it would be 11 months or 15 months. Now, these are these these two are AICT approved programs, that is, All India Council of Technical Education approved programs. So they may have a one month program. So I know for a fact that uh, we have, our institute has a, has a 15 month program, and and we are looking for interns, internship for them, and ours is in the month of May, June. So it's a one month program whereas uh, another institute on in bombay has a similar similar program and they have they they to have a one month program so that could be a, so they may not call it summer internship they may just call it internship so it but it means the same uh, they may have different different ways to brand that the other is the autumn program so uh, institutes uh, uh, have um, some institutes have a ngo kind of or a social um, uh, sink in, you know, immersion, which they call it, and uh, that happens instead of summer, and so they have one more program which could happen in autumn. So that is typically during the August September uh, period. Uh, the third one is when I when I'm talking about along with regular uh, classes, uh, we're saying that uh, students would would go to go to the class regularly, and they would also take small projects. This could be maybe in the area of market research. This could be, you know, maybe a desk project. So, you know, he does some compare, he or she does some comparison sitting at home or in the hostel. So, uh, I, I mean, that also is encouraged. Now, uh, personal view is that, you know, the first semester of of any institution, you, you should not, one should not. I would not. Um, I would recommend that uh, that these project happen after the September October because the first term student typically wants to wants to just get used to you know getting back to studies which probably he's left off if he's if he's worked for a couple of years uh, uh, you know at work and then he comes back to campus so the first semester I would say avoid that but maybe next semester onwards you know students do look for this and and most students in Mumbai would come and ask you for for projects like this Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my slide is a little changing. Okay. So these could be, you know, when I'm talking about regular, regular uh, classes, the first one, what I mentioned was the concurrent one. There are two others also, which is your interim project or live project. The interim project, uh, yeah. you know, students would get a credit for it. Uh, uh, so the interim project students would get a credit for it. So there's a hundred mark. Or they could be they could be termed as live projects, which which students tend tend to do, and which is part of part of curriculum. Uh, there is there are some institutions which also have a mandatory field work, which is two days a week. So uh, a day in their daily work life, they they work they come to campus for three days, and they work in an organization for two days, and there is a credit for this. So there are institutions in Bombay which which use this method too. Okay, now this is um, 
uh, a flowchart. Uh, so let me just, uh, uh, so if you were to remember what Ashutosh had shown earlier, there was a slide which he had. Uh, this is similar where uh, where I'm saying that the organized, this, so I've put this in, in two parts. In the internship program, the, my current slide is looking at what an, as an organization, what is expected of the organization to do and what is it that the institute does. That is my next slide. So here I've said that the first step would be obtain need for interns from de departments or functions. So uh, it can't be something which is which is knee jerk. Um, uh, it's expected that you talk to uh, talk to your uh, team team heads or uh, functional heads and ask them whether you need interns. So unless there is a project, uh, you know, one should not look and look at an intern. Then I'm saying that one should decide the internship broadly. And then you send a request, follow that with, with sending a request to the institution placement committee with specification on the types of students in the project brief. Now, the important aspect here is project brief. Uh, also, when you're looking at types of students, you could have, you could have filters. So the filter could be that I want somebody who's worked for a couple of years in this space, or I, I mean, experience in in this in this area would would make a would make a plus for me. Now, if you have very few projects, then then drilling down makes makes a difference. Or if you have projects where where there are you have many projects, then you're more look then you're looking at higher for. Uh, will and skill will come uh, like uh, what Ashutosh said some time ago. Uh, but it is important to have a project brief. Uh, the reason behind want, you know, the project brief is that um, once you have a project brief, the student then knows what is expected of him or her. So between the time the student actually gets, I mean, gets his summer placement and the time he comes to the organization, he's doing some reading in that specific area. So he, you know, he's trying to find out. I mean, whatever, either the theories or the concepts, or maybe competitors, or or maybe the the project per se. So, for example, if I'm looking at um, training and development as as a project, so he would probably need to need, read the read the you know training and development concept and be ready. Uh, you know, at least some amount of you know clarity happens there. Then uh, the next thing is that. So the uh, organization would obtain a student shortlist, interview the student along with the campus. And okay, what do I mean here is that I've said that interview students along with campus placements. Now, what mostly what typically what organizations do is that they come to campus for campus placements, and and while they are doing that, they also do the summer placement simultaneously. So the same team comes to campus for campus placements, and they also do this for summer placement. So they, they use the same window. Uh, so their presentation and, and everything remain, remains probably similar. Now, um, I don't know whether that's the right thing for, for uh, entrepreneurial organizations, but, uh, but that's the way large organizations would typically do. Then, you know, uh, I, should, I should think the decide stipend should be, should be a little earlier. And then you're looking at uh, you know uh, determining the project guide for project supervision. Uh, then formally you will have a joining letter which you will which you will mail which the organization mails to the placement committee. And then uh, you know uh, you define project scope, decides deliverables, timelines, and then the internship. It's important to have uh, you know most of these aspects in place uh, before the student comes in. Uh, stu students also keep the dialogue on with the with the HR person or the project guide or whoever is the one person that the organization uh, puts up as uh, you know uh, as as a contact person or as a li liaison person. Okay, and uh, then the next thing that I've said is that you could probably have you know you could review, and and then uh, you know. Uh, uh, typically what happens is that is that there would be a presentation so there is a report and a presentation so the institute would need a report and a presentation both and and then you would you may close with an with an organization certification so uh, a thank you nice knowing you and that's where the closure happens for the organization um, moving to the what the institute does so uh, so 
here very simply uh, what I'm what I'm saying is that um, the Institute seeks uh, internship with various organizations so you typically uh, you typically find uh, organ uh, institutes right to organizations for for summer internship uh, the way the, the the way the systems work is that see the summer placement or sorry the placement committee in institutes is typically very very uh, um, uh, you know small in number so you would have uh, one person one placement committee manager or an officer handling around 60 students or maybe even 120 students so the placement process is handled by student teams so it would be so the interaction from the from the academic institution will be with the student team member uh, most institutions would have verticals which are assigned so the student team members would be assigned verticals uh, some student would be uh, assigned to all finance organizations some students to all the manufacturing sector some students to the FMCG organizations some students to retail organizations so that's the way the committee works behind and they will ask you you know what are your requirements etc uh, most institutions may have if you send them a mail they will have they will have probably templates which which help you to determine your project scope too okay so so they may have a template which they can mail you and then and then you figure out uh, the organization sorry I would say the organization figures out what is it that is required and then creates creates a note I don't know I, I'll be honest I don't know whether there is a set template which is available with other institutes uh, I, you know I need to find that out but most students if you if you ask the organization institute they will send you a, a template then back end they call it they put up that template they call it student data ask for you know student sign ups then they lies with organizations like yours they would schedule an interview and then they would obtain an offer letter uh, the last point on that is that you know many institutions uh, if the student community is large they may say that you can only accept one internship from the Institute uh, now I need to specify spend a, a moment or two here very often what happens is that students uh, you know they sign up I'll, I'll be as honest as I can students sign up for internships and what happens is that they get a better internship with some other organization or organization of their choice or location of their choice so they may you know hook off and they may say that nee, nee, mujhe ye nahi karna. but that's not what 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 uh, should happen so as most institutes will will close and say that they'll have a policy which says that only one institute one internship from the Institute um, moving along uh, I'd like to share with you on something on credits credits meaning what I mean by credits is evaluation so you know uh, for concurrent projects or, or projects which students do uh, along with their course there is there's no credit so they, they are expected to do it on their own so there's so the rigor has to be has to be driven by the organization whereas a long duration internship which is a two month or a one month internship there would be a con credit so there would be either 100 marks or 50 marks you know uh, sign I mean given for this the assumption is that the student spends you know um, uh, so many hours at, at the workplace if it's a one month one month internship he's spending 40 hours a week so you know 160 hours so similarly for a two month it'd be 320 hours plus so we are assuming that that the guy that the student is doing work so he needs a credit for that then I, I also mentioned a faculty guide so the faculty guide evaluates the project so he or she would would also add the uh, concept if the student is unclear so, uh, uh, so the first thing that a student may do is that once a faculty guide is assigned you know as soon as he or she gets a project he will send the project to, to the faculty guide and the faculty what as his or her role what he or she does is that he'll say that you know our you know why don't you go and read these three four things do you remember these are the cases that we that we did in class or these are the textbooks so these are the websites that you need to need, need to read so somewhere there is there is there is a little bit of guidance which is given there uh, the next is that you know I've mentioned this earlier also that the credits for a credit to happen you know the, the student has to put in a report 
uh, it you know the reports basically 15 20 pages etc uh, it could be short it's not we're not looking at long uh, you know drawn out reports but we're just saying that you know whatever you've done has to be documented because communication is an important aspect uh, for uh, you know from st from a student learning perspective similarly we ask them to do a presentation and it could end up with a competition even at the academic institute Ashutosh spoke about a competition at the organization. Here I'm saying it could be a competition at the at the academic institution. And, and there are other areas also for competition. So organizations like the, the BMA, that is Bombay Management Association, uh, and uh, IMC, I think, that is, uh, you know, the management consultants. There's a Indian management consultants or institute, institute of management consultants. I think that body also has a competition. Then there are uh, institutes also which allow for, uh, you know, inter-institute competitions on summer projects. So students vie for that. So, so it's, it's recognition for them. And so they want to take part in these competitions. Um, moving to my, I mean, last two slides, I think. Um, so here I've said that what is the outcome for the student, the organization, and the institution? So for the organization who's taking the summer intern, uh, I would say it's corporate branding uh, because uh, uh, students, the, the management students get to know about you as an organization. Uh, they, they, they learn about you as an organization, which probably, uh, uh, you know, many organizations uh, need that. So, so maybe it's corporate branding. Uh, for the, you, you get an assignment and it's, it's a completed assignment. Recruitment opportunities, so you may you may uh, use a pre-placement offer mode and recruit the summer intern. Uh, Ashutosh has spent some time on that, so I will not uh, uh, I will not uh, you know talk about that. And a ready report or a document to actually work on and maybe take it ahead and implement. Okay, um, let me take a breath here. So for the student, it's learning exposure to a live project and pre-placement offers. So it's important for a student to get all of this and for the organization to provide all these things for the student. Very often what happens is that student does a summer internship in an organization uh, intending to take a specialization. So let's say the student wants to take marketing as a specialization, then he would, uh, you know, he would want to, want to want a marketing project. But he comes back uh, you know, and he says, no, no, this is not what I want to do because the summer internship was not all that great. So maybe I want to change. So, so that learning also happens for the for the student. For uh, for us as an institution, as an academic institution, you know, there's industry interface. We get to know what um, what organizations are doing out there. It helps the theory and the practice to to gel. Um, and the next thing is probably one of the outcomes is case studies and uh, for and research so uh, very often what happens is that when a summer intern actually goes and does a good job in an organization uh, what happens is that that can be converted to a case study so uh, immediately after the after this after the faculty and after the presentation sorry after the presentation and the student report etc so the faculty, you know, is actually seeing that, and whoever is a faculty guide, if he if he or she sees that there is uh, there is uh, meat in this, then they actually uh, put it up for uh, for uh, case study. So they write a case study. Organization obviously has to has to uh, you know say yes and and provide uh, their concurrence to do that. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, one of my uh, students, uh, not I have not done a case study, but one of my colleagues, uh, she, uh, uh, the boy, the her student worked with um, a chemical company. It's a UK-based chemical company based out of Bombay, and they had a wonderful case study which they wrote uh, on on HR and and rewards and recognition. So it it was very good so there would be many people who, who do things like that across campuses so if, if you were to look at many of the uh, you know premier institutions uh, faculty uh, use that as, as a bait and then go and engage with the organization and case studies are developed like that 
lastly for the institution is that you know because of industry interaction if we were to invite you for a guest lecture or you know um, for panel as a panelist to evaluate student projects etc it's it's a, it's a big plus for us and and um, institutions welcome this because very often is that there is a there's a huge um, uh, what should I say, there's a huge divide between what the industry is doing and what is taught in an institution. So that those gaps get bridged for the institution. So institutions welcome, uh, you know, um, the the interaction that, that you get from, from a student internship. Uh, so you could have internship in any of these areas. I mean, uh, actually, when uh, when Manak and Viral and I were discussing, we said we should we should put up a note on what kind of marketing projects, finance projects, HR projects, or operations projects. But I must tell you that that it has to be a managerial decision largely. Uh, so it should it should be it should drive the student to actually you know think. Um, you know, give his insights. So, so that's the way it is. So, it, it could be marketing. It could be anything in the space of marketing. So, so I didn't, w I didn't know how to do that. So, just put down the heads. So, these could be, these could be aspects. I, I could also add IT to this. Um, so, if you are, a, I mean, I, as entrepreneurial organizations, if IT is something that that you that one would looking at, you could have an intern in that in that area too. So. I think I'm done with my uh, presentation. I hope I've kept you engaged. Thank you. Thank you, Radha. I think that was truly uh, detailed and very insightful.